Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. This is the France 24 debate. For the very first time, nearly 20 years after the fact, the Rwandan genocide on trial in a Paris courtroom. Uh, that's uh, in uh, the person of uh, Pascal Simbikangwa, who at the time of the genocide uh, was a senior person in the intelligence services uh, of the Hutus who uh, perpetrated uh, that uh, massacre of 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus. With us to talk about it, uh, born in Kigali, Benjamin Sahene, author of The Ethnic Trap. Welcome back as well to Patrick de Saint-Exupéry, editor of French magazine uh, 21 and the author of Unspeakable France in Rwanda. Pierre Conessa, a political scientist, author of The Manufacturing of an Enemy or How to Kill with a Clear Conscience. Um, on Twitter, uh, international uh, uh, human rights lawyer Céline Bardet asking, isn't it an overrated expectation to think that this trial will uncover what happened in Rwanda. Let's go to France Van Gett's Eve Irvine, who's at Paris Central Courts. Uh, Eve, judging from what you've uh, seen so far, and you're saying you're in the procedure part, it's only the opening day, uh, but will we have answers as to what happened in Rwanda at this trial? Well, indeed, I think everybody involved hopes that they will have answers uh, to this trial. Uh, for, for the plaintiffs, they, they've already made their decision, naturally enough. They have uh, worked on this since 2009 when they filed charges against Pascal Simbikangwa, uh, De Froza and Alain Gauthier, that couple who are leading, if you like, a lot of cases here in France. Uh, they have travelled numerous times to Rwanda. They have uh, tons of witness statements that people, numerous people uh, from across Rwanda, Wonder coming with that same story that they really believe Pascal Simbi Kangwa, they saw him uh, come up to checkpoints to the arm that car, you know, adapted to his handicap. Uh, they say he was high up in the government. He comes from the same region, which for them is ultimately saying that he's close to the president and close to the powers and was therefore involved. This is something, of course, his lawyers uh, reject as a shortcut. Uh, they say that while he had a very good job in the presidential guard, and he did come from the same geographical area as the president, he admired Habat Yarimana greatly, but he didn't have any decisionary role. He didn't make the decisions. He didn't carry out the genocide. They even, in fact, argue that he protected some of the Tutsis during those events in Rwanda. Your reaction to that, Patrick de Saint-Exupéry, saying, I wasn't the one making the decisions. Well, the process is going to, to run for six weeks, which is a very long time. So the, the, we, are, we will have a lot of occasion to go deep inside what happens. And I just wanted to, to, to complete what Pierre just said about French-Rwanda relation from 90 to 94. That was sort of secret policy. I mean, uh, there was a cooperation, a military cooperation. But as a reporter, when I was going to, to Rwanda at that time, in, in these years, 90 to 94, it was just impossible to have a, an interview with the co military cooperation. They just closed the door. And they were, they were just at that time for, for all these years saying to press, just go away. This is incredible. It, it's supposed, in a way, to be official, practically, that was confidential, and we saw that, these words, confidential and diplomatic depeche. That's the first point. The second point, the second point, the second point is the very high implication of the French president, François Mitterrand. That was my question. From 90 to 94, <coughs> who is deeply involved in the file, in the Rwanda file, who, who makes a lot of decisions. And we, we saw that in all the official documentary, uh, uh, minister reunion meetings uh, under the auspice of the president, always during these years, Mitterrand is always asking to everyone what happens in Rwanda, what, what are the last news, give and, me the last why touch. Is he, so why is he so involved? Why is he so involved? It's, it's very strange. It's very strange. Uh, there is no explanation. But... And it's impossible to, to, to make speaking with someone who is dead now. So I, I, I'm not going to elaborate on that. The, practically, we should ask him, but, the, but it's just impossible. But at, during the genocide, he had these words in private, which were just incredible. And we we'll give a, a beginning of an answer. In these countries, a genocide is not so important. That's President Mitterrand said. In 94, during the genocide, in private. This is just incredible. He was French president, and France 
is a great country with a big history. In a way, we came back to sort of question like Papon. We got this Papon story, an old process from a French the official Nazi collaborator who, who was, was put on implicated trial. Yeah. In, in Nazi. Uh, yeah. Well, it takes years and years for France to, to, to be able to confront to that story. The Rwanda is exactly the same case. It takes years and years to be able to confront the story. Rwanda is Papon again in France. Uh, it's, I've heard it said, Pierre Conessa, that what was needed for this trial to happen was a changing of the guard in defense circles, a younger generation that wasn't involved. You mean the French, uh, <coughs> French servicemen? Well, you know, um, I understand the, 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 the speech of the lawyers of Mr. Uh, Simbi Kongwa, but because, you know, um, the mechanism of preparing, planning the genocide was so complex and organized that in a way he could say that he was just a, a small piece of the jigsaw puzzle, you know. But what should have informed, you know, the French president and the French authority was the preparation of the genocide. The Hutu Manifesto, you remember that mm -hmm. text, yeah. which was exactly a racist text explaining that no one has to marry with a Tutsi, you can't make a, give work to a Tutsi, etc. It was exactly a genocide like it should have so been. So when in. you hear, Pierre, when you hear Bill Clinton say that the biggest regret of his presidency was not having stepped in to stop the Rwandan genocide, yeah. the implication of that would have been for the U.S. to cross swords with France? No, no, no. <clears throat> the question for, for U.S. was different. Um, is it necessary to risk, take the risk of the jihads killed for black people? That was the question. <laughs> that was the rest of the consequence of Somalia. That was different. It was a, mm -hmm. not a, fr a Franco-American question. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember that episode in Somalia. That's why the American opinion didn't want any more military intervention in Africa. All right, we can go to the Paris Central Courts and uh, welcome uh, attorney Simon Foreman. He's representing the civil plaintiffs uh, in this case. Thank you for being with us in the France 24 debate. Um, y your thoughts on, on, on this? Uh, we were just talking about the timing of this trial. It's taken 20 years for, for it to be able to take place in France. In your view, could it have taken place sooner? Well, it depends whether you, you, you meant, you're thinking about this specific trial of Pascal simbi -Kongua. Probably not much sooner because he was only arrested in 2008, 2009. The investigation lasted for four years, which is approximately reasonable. I mean, it's uh, among the standards in the French criminal investigation. Uh, so that specific trial, uh, it was more or less logical that it would take place approximately now. But if, if you turn to the load of... 25 and even more than that uh, cases that are waiting to be investigated and sent to trial regarding the Rwandan genocide, uh, then you can start asking yourself some questions. Why has France not been able to organize a trial, not the Simpi Kongwa trial, but it could have been one of many others uh, that have been wake, waiting to be investigated since 1995, some of them. I think the most uh, ancient ones are, are as old as that. Do you think, Simon Foreman, that, uh, for instance, the widow of President uh, Habriamana, Agat Habriamana, should be in the dock? I'm saying that she, among a number of others, um, has been investigated for many, many years. I think she's not one of the oldest cases. The, the oldest one, which is quite symbolical, is, uh, is a priest called Munyeshiaka. Uh, the investigation has been going on for 19 years to date, which is unbelievable and uh, uh, doesn't make any sense. Uh, I, I guess that even he must feel that pretty uncomfortable and uh, impossible to live with. So there are other cases. Agat Abiyahimana is one of them but there are many more uh, that could have been investigated much sooner and that could have ended into trial much sooner. Definitely, yes. When he spoke to France 24's Mark Perlman in 2010, Paul Kagame said he didn't care where the widow of Rwanda's former president was tried so long as she was uh, put on trial. Same with, uh, he gave the example of Eugène uh, Ramyoko, a Rwandan-born doctor who strongly denies any role in planning the genocide. Most importantly, they should be brought to justice. Where they are brought to justice is another question. If France can bring them to justice and 
justice is seen to be done for me, I would be happy. All right, that Benjamin Sandy, that's what that's what Rwanda's president is saying. Yes. But do you think back in Kigali people would like to see this trial happening at home rather than here in Paris? Uh, I have a different view because I live here. But um, the thing is that uh, be it be, uh, Simbi Kwanga or someone else, as long as there is a trial in France, that is a big step. And it will open up to, um, to maybe other examples. But... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I would have preferred him to be um, judged in Rwanda, but uh, if France is uh, willing to do it, why not? Um, Patrick de Saint-Exupéry, a whole host of countries choosing to try genocide suspects on their national soil rather than send them back to Kigali. Is that founded? Well, this is the first case in France. So uh, let's, well, I'm sure that there are 25 people waiting, suspected of having participated in the genocide, waiting in France for, for judgment. I'm sure that from these 25, some are going to, to be judged in Rwanda. This is just the first case in France, and we need to have that first case in France, just to be clear on a number of points. And when you hear the, the conciliatory statement there by the Rwandan president, when you see that, remember, there was, for two years, there were relations were severed between Paris and Kigali. How do you explain the fact that relations have warmed up? Well, uh, you know, when you take all the big countries who have been implicated in a way or different way in Rwanda's events, you see, you just notice that someone like Bill Clinton, as president of the United States, went to Kigali a long time ago. And, have, and he has been able, in the name of America, of telling a number of things in Kigali. We've been wrong on that point. And you acknowledge a number of facts. We, as France, haven't been in that position, except Nicolas Sarkozy went in Rwanda in 2010 and spoke of error, which is a very minimalist Mistakes. yes text, which is a very minimalist <laughs> word, which is an important word, but a very minimalist word. And he didn't is explain... Is that the best a French president can do? Well, at the time, it was, but he wasn't in a position to explain what was these stakes, give words, give an, an, a reality on the world. And that's the next step we, we have to work for, being able to give re, reality to a world we've been wrong. Where, why? And it's important for France. For, for, for the future, it's really important. We have to do that, and it will take some time, always. And, and the Paris Magistrates uh, has set up a new war crimes unit, Is now has uh, other cases in the pipeline, including uh, that of a Frenchman, uh, nicknamed Mitterrand's gendarme, Paul Baril. A 2011 search of his apartment turned up documents pointing to an alleged uh, sale of weapons to the Hutu extremists. In, get this, May 1994, that's one month after uh, the genocide uh, began. Do you think one day we'll see Paul Baril in the, uh, on trial, uh, Pierre Conessa? I don't know, perhaps. But there is an aspect which seems to be very important for this trial taking place in Paris, which is the aspect of the Franco-Rwandan uh, relations, because it's not only the case of Mr. Sibikangwa. Just keep in mind one example. When Mrs. Abiyarimana flees, you know, uh, fled from the, fled from Rwanda and arrived in Paris, she's got a lot of money coming from the military staff of the Elysee, a, a significant amount of money. Well, what does that mean? I mean, does that mean that there were so troubled relations between the systems and the, the, the deciders in Rwanda that no one could explain that kind of attitude. And now she's living somewhere, no, nobody knows precisely where, but it should, she should be the first, the number one in the list. So Baril should be the number 55, I don't know. But, you know, this question is very important. I mean, the aspect for right. this trial in Paris must be to, to lighten, you know, this aspect of the relations. So, so wait a minute, let me just ask Simon Foreman on this. Simon Foreman, do you feel as though it is the trial yes. of Pascal Simbikangwa, or do you think it's also the trial, to a certain degree, of France's uh, complicity in events back in 1994? 
No, not at all. It, it, I hope it won't become that. It is meant to be the trial of Pascal Simbikangwa, and uh, I, I would hate it to become some, anything else. The, the history of franco rwandan relations is a certainly a most interesting topic, but uh, it's not the subject of the trial. Um, and I, I, I'd like to add something. Uh, similar trials have taken place. You know, it's, it's uh, this mechanism, this legal mechanism is called universal jurisdiction uh, that allows the, the courts of one country country to, to try someone for crimes committed in another country that has nothing to do with the country where the trial is taking place. Um, it has been a duty of every state where um, suspects of genocide are found to, to try them, either to extradite them to Rwanda or to try them where they have been arrested, or for the most important, uh, the, the very few, very important people, send them to the ICTR, the United Nations uh, Tribunal in in Arusha. So there have been similar trials in, in Belgium, in Canada, in Switzerland, in Scandinavia, uh, maybe in England, I'm not sure, but in, in quite a few countries before. France is nothing special about that. Uh, it's got nothing to do with uh, the warming of uh, the relationship between France and Rwanda and between Kagame and Sarkozy, although that did help to speed up uh, the investigations, certainly. But the duty to try these people has, has, uh, has been a duty uh, uh, upon France for, for as long as the genocide has ended, uh, just as it has been for those other countries which I mentioned. Simon Foreman, one last question for you before we, we let you go. Um, last week, it was in the news, there was um, the trial of um, Radovan Karadzic, uh, the former Bosnian Serb leader, would take place in The Hague. And there was a lot of prevarications when the former Bosnian Serb general Ratko Mladic uh, was cross-examined by Karadzic. It really proved a letdown for a lot of those who are following uh, that, that trial. Do you fear, when you start a trial like this one, that there could be a, a letdown, that we won't get the truth the, uh, the, uh, out of this trial? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, obviously, it'll be easier to answer that once the trial is over in six or eight weeks. But uh, no, we, we all have a lot of expectations. Uh, we hope that some bits of the truth will, will uh, appear. Uh, Simbi Kangwa has made very contradictory statements uh, during the four years of investigation. Uh, it has, oh, it's only just beginning. Uh, some of his contradictions have been pointed to him this afternoon uh, on my details so far, uh, but we are uh, we have a lot of expectations uh, whether will be successful, or whether uh, he will be convicted at the end of the trial. I don't know. I certainly hope he will be. I hope that the evidence will be solid. I hope that the witnesses, when they come into court from Rwanda, uh, will be able to convince uh, the jury. Um, but uh, things are open. Uh, the, the trial is not... Uh, it's a fair trial, uh, and uh, anything can happen. So uh, I won't be able to, to, to uh, predict any more than this. All right. Well, Simon Foreman, we wish you uh, the, the best of luck in presenting your arguments. Thank you for joining us in the France 24 uh, debate. Um, Thank you very much. The, uh, uh, when there was... Uh, the, now, as we said, there's been other trials in the past here on French soil. When there was the Klaus Barbie trial uh, back in the 1980s, he was the head of the Gestapo in Lyon. Um, he stonewalled. He didn't answer the questions. He even left the proceedings at one point. He didn't cooperate. He didn't play ball. Uh, at the end of the day, when you look back at those other big historic trials, do you feel as though they really do shed light? Yeah, yeah. It, it's an occasion to, to, to give light on the events. It, it won't, a trial will never say the truth of something, but it will ga give light on what happens, and that's very important. And, and just a precision, you were speaking of Captain Paul Baril, which has an important role in, in the Rwanda events. Uh, the precision in that one, Captain Paul Baril is under investigation of the French justice for months now. So there will be something happening at the end. I don't know what. I don't know. As for this process, I don't know if Pascal Simbi Kongwa will be innocent or guilty. But Captain Paul Baril will face the same question, most probably, by the French justice. So what does that say about France today? Well, it, it says that we still have some problems like Papon. Why do we need to take so long before being able to trial people who, have, who could have 
responsibility in a crime against humanity. And humanity has been placed, wounded. We need to do that. Um, the uh, the trial itself now uh, opening. Benjamin Saini, mm -hmm. what are you expecting from this trial? Uh, what I expect is that it would um, it would open up um, for other trials of uh, people who uh, France uh, up to this uh, stage has not uh, sent back to Rwanda and who are wanted for uh, crimes against humanity. Yeah? Do you think you learned something? Uh, surely. <laughs> No, uh, but, uh, um, well, I, I think so, yes. Um, and Pierre Connessa, I want to bring, bring it back to today again. We, 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 we've mentioned how times have changed, and there is a new generation, and there is uh, Mitterrand's former uh, personal gendarme, as he was nicknamed, who's under investigation. More importantly, more broadly, we see now in the Central African Republic, the French intervene there, and we've had panelists come on this show and say, our inaction during the Rwandan genocide is one of the reasons we're present today in the Central African Republic. No, I won't say that. I think that we are living a different epoch, a different era. At uh, that time, I mean, the Rwandan genocide happened in a very specific moment in which, you know, all the secret diplomacy was exactly at the peak, you know. And um, one must keep in mind that uh, the trial of Mr. Sibi Kongwa is the open trial here in Paris, which is this aspect of the Franco-Rwandan relation. But at the same time, you know, because genocide was a mass, uh, a mass um, genocide, there, the, there are in Rwanda gachacha commissions, which are very important because you can't condemn 90% of the population which was the Hutu population, which means that they were obliged to invent a kind of uh, trials which are not exactly trials, but more, which are more opening session, you know, in which people are obliged, you know, to recognize that they have massacres, that their neighbors, etc. So, I mean, it's a very difficult uh, event, you know, for a Rwandan population. So we have to make our duty in France. I mean, if we have to investigate on the relation of France, I understand the position of the lawyer, which explained that we have to focus on Mr. Sibi Kangwa case. But as a French citizen, I mean, I'm more waiting about more information than this uh, commission, you know, parliament commission, which was just limited to information, not investigation. And, and the fact that now you have, for the very first time, Rwandan forces deployed alongside French forces in the Central African Republic? which means that nobody can make forecast in political affairs, you know. Uh, uh, do you think uh, uh, that uh, this is a case where uh, the rift, the times have changed, or do you think Franco-Rwandan relations could sour once again? Uh, one never knows in, uh, in international relationships, but um, I think um, they've mended fences. They've uh, reached out. Yeah. And the very fact that Rwanda was willing to go to Central Africa is um, is a boost to the, um, the, um, the the deployment of French troops there, I think. All right. And we're going to have uh, to leave it there. I want to yes. thank you, uh, uh, Benjamin Sehene. I want to thank Pierre Conessa. Pierre Conessa, uh, uh, just a, a word to conclude. Uh, there is an aspect of the genocide which is very important for African elites. I mean, the, I like the, the title of your book, The Ethnic Trap, because <clears throat> you know that genocide happened with, after several episodes of, gen of massacre, which means that the responsibility of colonization is one thing, but it was 50 years after the end of the colonization. So the, I think that the African elites have to, to think about, you know, that ethnic trap in which, by which usually the rules in African states. All right, and it certainly is uh, topical, especially uh, of late when we've been talking about the Central African Republic, unfortunately. Uh, Patrick de Saint-Exupéry, I want to thank you as well uh, for joining us here. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.